Okay, uh, it's Wednesday, September 2nd, 2020. Uh, I've got five after five, and we're going to start with the Town of Sangerville Board of Selectmen meeting. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, item two, approval of the minutes, uh, A, August 19, 2020, select board meeting. Make a motion to approve A. Second. We vote. All three in favor. Uh, item three, review of treasurer's warrants, payroll 66, 68, accounts payable 64, 65, 67, and 69. Make a motion to approve A and B as read. Second. Those in favor? That's unanimous. We don't have any guests today, so item four, open session, we'll move past it. Um, item five, old business, uh, roadside brush cutting. We had uh, Rick Crew here at our last meeting. We discussed um, doing a rather large chunk of Silver's Mill Road, maybe, with um, his equipment. Uh, you went out, Mike, you went out and looked at it and said, 33 feet from the center line is pretty <laughs> kind far of daunting. back. And yeah, um, so I thought about it a little bit. Um, I also did go over to Charleston and look yep. at part of that project, too. And Jody, did you I did it? as well, yeah. Did they go full width out there? I Pretty close, I think. Did you measure yeah, it? I didn't measure it. I did, but as you said, the, the ditches are you, significant. The, the portion I, I didn't look at all of it, but the portion I looked at had been well ditched. So you, he, he, trees are pushed back up on the high side of the ditch, and he mm. cleaned everything out of that. Mm. Much of what we're doing on Sills Mills Road is either the low side of the road where there's no ditch at all. Mm -hmm. And so trees have really crept very close to the road. Um, so I don't, it'll be interesting to see how far back he can get that. Um, yeah. Has have any of you been out 15 and see how they're pushing that back on your way to Abbott? No, oh, no. Just went out today. I, I, it looks like that road is gonna become a much more significant road, but they had piles of debris. I mean, some of them two stories tall. Whoa. That they oh, were God. grinding and disposed. Now he's not pushing back nearly as far as what they did, but it generates a lot of material. Well, 33 feet, you're on the power line side. You're past where the CMPs got cleared down through there. Yep. But I, the size of the material down through there is much bigger than what he's going to be able to grow. You've also got a lot of houses, a lot of residents. Yeah, in some places. In some uh, places, you've got a lot of residents. But there's still a, lot of, a lot of the residents, ones are the ones that are dying that's causing right. a lot of our issues. True. I mean, you take that entire stretch from Zepp's by Ames and down through Ellis's. I mean, that's where we get hit almost every single time for down power line. Zepps was this past weekend. We were out for oh, was that one? I don't know, three, four hours. Oh wow! But power blipped. Yeah, wow. but I it's, mean, it's it's in those areas that we do have a, a really bad problem. It's pretty dense forest yeah. right up to the road's edge in some places. So, I, but he's looked at it, and he if he thinks he can manage it. I, the one other thing is I said I was going to go measure the, from the gray resident all the way to the town line. And if you, it's six-tenths of a mile to Gilman's Corner. And then it's a mile to the town line from there. Yeah. I really don't think we want to pay him to do a whole mile for that last mile. It's just, I don't think there's... Very much there. No. It's all pasture and, and homestead. There's a couple of intruding... Like there's an apple tree by Swampy Acres that's sticking out that needs right. to be trimmed. Uh, there's a little patch of uh, planted, it looks like tree growth pine. Or something. That could be knocked back a little bit as you get right near the town line, you know, where the church is. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But that's probably not 200 yards of material. It's really, there's probably 200 yards on the entire mile. So if he wants to hit it for us, that would be great, but I, I don't Give us something for a deal. On yeah, that. just yeah. to clean up that yeah. little bit. Yeah. But, um, so I anyway. Out, I went out and looked at Flanders Hill from 23 to um, 
where the power after the power ceases to where the power starts again. Mm -hmm. That's two miles. Okay. That looks like a decent stretch. That stretch <laughs> to done. Yeah, I, it's fine. Yeah. I drove through that this week There's too. <laughs> Anderson, I mean, Townhouse Road is bad. I mean, mm -hmm. there's we, that's. Oh, I bet it is. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yes. It's, it's we can do is. The thing with Flanders Hill is, is to take. I think take figure out how many miles you got and how long do you want this project to last, and that's what we ought to do. Minimum. No. The thing with Flanders Hill is you're not going to irritate. Well, it's, there's nobody. There's no power there, so there's no homes there. There are very few homes there. I I went through. There were a couple of small open places, but you know we, we pay in for two miles straight and where it's open, it, it's open. Um, there are very few residences. There are a couple of places where it looks like somebody's planted something that they want there. And I thought, well, it looks like a good test spot <laughs> that two miles to see how well he does and whether he annoys everybody. And I'm not worried about annoying anybody. Yeah. Um, because it needs to be done. Right. I mean, I mean, as far as the right away, it's the right away, and it's, right away. it's, it's, a, good, it's a good two mile stretch. It ends right before Cleves Field, and you probably don't want to do that much on that end anyway. No, that's so true. it's going to be open. Right. Um, but he likes three miles. Uh, he's at the I townhouse. Yeah. I mean, it's not, there's not. We've got a lot of miles that need to be done. So. Yeah. That's the big thing: is how much do you want to spend? Mm -hmm. No, no question. How much do we have to spend? Well, we've already spent our brush cutting um, budget and more. I got another quote for the uh, finishing of East Sangamon Road. It's going to be a little less than the other one, so I've given that person the go-ahead. Um, so there's 13 out of our 70. Um, I don't think we're going to get to the line road just because I can't find the documentation. So. That leaves you fifty-five, fifty thousand. We I don't think we want to blow it all on brush cutting because I I got some things like I've got Warren's going to do the parking lot for me with a couple of loads of gravel and shape it because I think my well we got more gravel roads you could I got more could, gravel I mean you could spend fifty grand on gravel you gotta say if you already accounted for grading I, grading is a separate line so okay. we'll oh good wow. Because if you went over to Flanders Hill, you saw what I saw, that needs to be hit again. It all needs to be hit, so yeah. I've got to grab a contractor and get them out there. And, yep. Um, yeah, I, so it's a question of how much of an experiment, I guess, do we want to do? Do you want to do the whole, that that portion of the, the Sows Mills Road and see thing, what happens? If we're doing or? East Sangerville, if we're doing, I haven't gone to look at it, but if we're doing 1.75 miles and he's already out there in the ditches, Maybe you want to hit that. I don't. I don't know how much wood there is. I mean, you you hit the place by Morse's two or three years ago with all those old. Big There's trees. a lot of big stuff up through there. Yeah, they can't. But he can't get he can't that. Can't get that anymore. There may be there may be some roads that are worse than the Sills Mills Road, but well, I, I doubt that they that, get um, as much traffic. No, 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 Mills. I got a call from Steve Lawson saying. I just want to let you know I'm cutting back some of the branches. I don't want to scratch my truck. Yes. I said, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. So that one can go lower as far as priority, but we yeah, we, we, I, knew, we knew that that was low priority and had to be done at some point. But West Road, I don't know our mile. Got some open fields there. But I said there's quite a lot of that. I mean, I had, didn't drive it this year. I drove it several times last year, and it wasn't bad. But yeah. um, I just need to get somebody in there and do do some work so they can plow again. Probably is the best. Yep. Yeah, um, I think you'll find that needs the same approach as what you got over in East Hangerville. Mm -hmm. That Line big road. goop hole. Yeah. That needs to be dug out. Put some stone in there. And that we can do. But that yeah. we own that road, so yes. no, I don't mind fixing it. Yeah, yeah. I was in there this spring. That was I'll yeah. bet. <laughs> what What did we say was Silver's Mills? How far is it? Did you say? Well, the the, the part uh, you know where the, so where we terminated minutes. paving with yeah, the yeah. rare residence. Yeah. That's one point six to the town line as you head towards Route Seven. So six and a half miles though. Oh. 
But no, six tenths five. that that yeah. said six tenths yeah. takes you to Gilman's yeah. Corner right there, right. Newville. Okay. So then that's a mile. That mile, I don't that's think not, you can do so it. We're talking like four miles. Right. We, we certainly don't want to pay for a mile. Right. No. It's all pasture. Right. It's like five and a half miles all together. I believe. That's I didn't measure the. I just read, measured from. Um, the Six, five and a half, five something. Yeah, it's five something. I, I can go look on my wall. Well, I've got the list on my wall. Yeah, I, I, that, no. that sounds about right. I'm sure there's a scale on that up there. We could yeah. measure it. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Well, I wanted like that, where there is so much pasture, it's almost, say, hey, it's almost a mile. Yeah, if you would do the whole and do it for five. Right. Correct. Right. Correct. Right. And, and just get that whole, that was done. Yeah. In fact, I will measure to Gilman, I will measure to the Gray residents on the way home tonight. So we'll know the two combined. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, we basically pay him to do the whole road, but he charges us to the gray residence. If the, he would agree to that, that right. would be a yeah, great right. compromise, I, I think. And he's really okay. not going to do much beyond there. No, I mean, even down the other end, the whole, all that field pine or red pine is down through there. You're not doing nothing there. No. I mean, that swampy acres is really the only place you think you're going to do much. Well, you know, because the, I think the newts push all that stuff back anyway. In those fields, so it's, you know, even where you have forest, it doesn't come out that much. Uh, so anyway, it wasn't bad, but I will measure it so we can put the two together and see what he wants to do. So is we're just going to do Silver's Mills or Silver's Mills and Flanders? Well, he, what about Townsend? You, he's Townsend, there, right there. I don't know how long that is. I don't even know. What do you call town? Towns and towns end, right? Towns, uh, mm, town towns house. house. Town house. Yep. Yeah. Town house. Yep. Town house. It's the other end of the west. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. It's just not a throughway. I'm not saying no, it's not important. No, that's the other. That's but what Flanders Hill is a throughway, and it's bad. Right. Uh, mm. I'm fine with. It. I don't think he would mind. I mean, he can drive through. He's, if he wants to go two places, have him do it. Okay. We're talking seven-ish miles. Yeah, and you know, they're not, well, no, they're not really conveniently located next to each other. No. <laughs> but that's kind of the same deal. I mean, I'd, just as, I'd be just as happy to have them. That's got a lot of fields and a lot of things as well. What do you give you, you know what I mean? It's Say it's same scenario with six miles. It's not too bad. I mean, he, he's starting on the 23 end. So <coughs> then he goes down and gets on Planet's Hill. But. So he's going to, yeah, get a trailer. But yeah, he's got a trailer, either way. But they both need to be done. Yeah, but it'd just be nice to get the whole thing done. So I agree. Can choose. Okay. Yep. So I, that's kind of how I wish he would do was, yeah, it's five and a half miles. I'll judge you five for this one. This one's the same scenario. I mean, take yeah. the cleaves end and between the two ends, that's there, a lot yeah, of feet. There isn't much left. Yeah. No, there isn't. There's but there's hen pack and stuff that you're going to get somebody else to come back in and yeah. Yeah. After those two, what what else would be on the list? Other, than, I mean, you get into the the dead ends. Well, I think you're going to talk about doing your road next year because we don't. Well, we're going to get stuck it. doing that again. There's no question. We're we're going to either spray it or we're going to grind it again That's next right. year because it's That's there. That's what I didn't. I didn't chase down any sprayers. It's too bad because it's the perfect time to spray. Yeah. But, right now. This yeah. Time? It's, it's there's. Some of those alder now are six, seven feet tall, but they're not encroaching yet. Mm -hmm. So if you hit them right now, you'd, you'd be, you wouldn't touch them again for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. wow. But next year, they're going to be encroaching. But if you get something to spray it the day after we cut it, it won't grow back, period. Well, you can't, you can't cut it and spray it the same day. You need green on it. No. Nope. Well, you, well, it depends on, I, well, on what I'm using. I need green. It doesn't work without leaves. Yeah. So like the stuff, like when I had my weeping willow and stuff cut at the house, mm -hmm. that was the guy, he's licensed to spray. And so he showed up and he cut it and then he left. He was getting ready, it was 8.30, 9 o'clock by the time he got that tree done. And he goes, oh, I'll be right back. He said, I forgot the spray. And I said, oh, you come back tomorrow. He said, uh-uh. He really? says, you, you've only got, once that, when you cut, as long as that's wet, you can spray. But as soon as the stump starts to dry, if you drive by my house, you'll see a little patch directly across from my driveway. I sprayed it the spring following when he cut it, mm -hmm. and you won't believe it. Right. I mean, it's right to the dirt. Right. 
Hmm. That is, and so that's two summers. Wow. It has wow. come back. Hmm. Wow. So you're doing the same thing. It's just your product. It has to be green. It's right. If you get there, yeah. the commercial I, I, stuff, it'll do it instantly. Next spring, it all started coming up. I hit it once, and that was it. And further down the road that I own, I didn't spray it on purpose because I just wanted to see what was going to happen, and it's it's Massive. coming back like crazy. I have a lot of that red twig. It's very invasive, and so anyway. Well, I would think if we do if Roundup does work like that, then that's a different level of who you got to hire because you don't need a license. I don't think for that. I have no idea. I, it, it seems hard to find somebody to do it, but you have. Um, if I had your rig. That's who was cutting my tree, but I don't no, know. No, he bought my rig. <laughs> <laughs> he sprayed it. But he could do my road. He, he didn't call me oh. back either, so. But you just never used it. I just, I mean, it he just got didn't... it all. He's, he needed the pump attached. Oh, oh. And he, and he, you got it all. Plus, done. it was really too big for me. It was, oh. I didn't need that just capacity. Overkill. But you could, that you rig would do the purpose milk. Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah. We'll hire Dale. He, he doesn't know if he has a license. I get enough twitch. I don't know if I want to get a commercial spray. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't take very long. Okay, so th that okay. I guess you want, I guess you've got the green light. Uh, okay. I will check in. And I'll just check that mileage on the way home so you'll know exactly what to tell him. Okay. The only thing I would like to know about that, if Landona can actually say, no, you're not doing that. No, what, cutting? Yeah. No, I don't. I don't yeah. Well, we ran into this already on your have, have they ever said you can't ditch? I mean, they well, might say it, I'm but they, we know they can't do it. Correct. So, and we've run into this before with people that didn't want a tree cut. Yeah, I, I think based on our experience with just like we just did them, it feeders. Mm -hmm. I fully there was agree. a lot of people said so I, I don't think want it'd be that. Nice for her to have that right here. Say, I apologize that you don't appreciate this. I would check with Fluella. He'll know, okay. but I, I think and he's already answered the question for I us. Think so. Speaking of, not to change, we'll get back to up here, but um, McFeeders. But. The, but I thought that the Charleston project looked good. Oh, I thought it looked great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, and there yeah. was no damage to the road or anything no, like that. No, and there's a real consistency, and he went up an X height, and you know, so when you run your eyes down the whole road, it looks really nice. Yep. So. Yep. But I coming back across there, <laughs> Garland and yeah. everybody's got brush problems. <laughs> it's, like, oh, yes. it's like everybody's like. Well, Whoa. I think the problem is everybody tries to tackle it in such a small bite, yep. you don't realize yep. how fast it's coming back. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's what I mean. You really need. To it's the only thing that makes me down. think that herbicide is not available because why isn't everybody doing it? It doesn't make any sense. So maybe it's just not legal. I don't know. I just CMP can do it. I don't, can't imagine why. Uh, okay, uh, are we done with brush cutting? Yes. We'll move to B, uh, Fire Department Ordinance and Action Plan. Okay. Um, I'm going to read this to you. Is this the ordinance or this the action is the plan? the action plan. Okay. Um, in response to a complaint filed by several former Sangamon firefighters, and after reviewing numerous documents and speaking to a dozen firefighters, I have decided to implement a plan of action for improving the Sangville Municipal Fire Department. Um, bullet number one, a new ordinance needs to be drafted for the running of the fire department. The current one is outdated. This will need to be approved by the select board and passed at the annual town meeting. The personnel policy will be updated to reflect the changes to the ordinance and cover all human resource issues. After that bullet, I have um, written the select board as to whom will tackle this issue. We've started with an, a new draft of an ordinance, and we can come back to that after I finish uh, this action plan. Okay, bullet number two, new SOGs need to be formalized, approved by the select board, and shared with the entire department. These will need to be strictly followed. There are firefighters employed by the department that have never seen written SOGs, um, standard operating guidelines, and have never had written ones to go by. The people who need to address this are the fire department officers. I have sent, um, I've given the fire chief a copy of this. He picked it up. I sent him a text saying that I had written it, that he needed to look at it and to follow it, and that he 
was welcome to the meeting tonight, but he wasn't required to attend. Um, other than he texted back okay and has picked up the action plan, I have not heard from him. Bullet point number three, the fire department call sheet needs to be revised. Each firefighter needs to put down the time he slash she checked in and out. Each firefighter needs to initial his or her own hours. The officer in charge of the scene will, will sign each call sheet. Um, the entire fire department will be responsible for this. Uh, you've all seen the call sheets. What happens is somebody writes down the time in and the time out and writes a line down through everybody's mm -hmm. slot and then the firefighters who attended are supposed to initial it. Well, it's very hard to read and very hard to, you spend a lot of time cross-checking who was here for two hours, who might have been here for two and a half hours, who... And you have to do that? Lorna has to do that. Oh, uh, yeah, that's, that's... But then I have to right. check. Right, yeah. Well, that, actually, Wanda that, does it. Just she hands in a spreadsheet to Lorna. Lorna checks the spreadsheet. When I went and checked... Um, Behind them, it wasn't right. Oh. So, hey, hey, hey. so uh, back to that yeah. procedure. This yeah. is just kind of an example. Uh, have you asked them to do it in a more orderly way? I have not. Okay. This well, you did. Then I, he was. Well, yes, I, I, yeah, I, 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 yeah. I've looked at it before. They just went to, and one of the bullet points addresses is they just went to being paid every half year. I said, no, we're not going to do that. Does that make? Every six, six, months. Months, six months instead of they were being paid quarterly. We're going back to quarterly. Um, I don't know, we might even go back to monthly. I was saying, well, I would do, that way you would have a, a, a but a so, we had, so Lorna had a stack of all of these. Go once a year. Oh, and, oh, they, and they like that. Really, um, I mean, it's no different than us. I mean, yeah. Well, I thought these were paid hourly, though. It's hourly pay. So yeah. you would, wouldn't you want to keep track of where you, because some are working yeah. many, many more hours than others. Right? Yeah, that they don't go over. You know, wouldn't you, you, then you'd have a better idea of where you were within the year. No? Who's showing up? Who isn't? If you've got a spreadsheet, it's going to keep going. I mean, it doesn't matter whether... Yeah, but you're not going to know up. until the end of the year. Well, and, no, and, these and should be don't... turned, but these shouldn't be looked at quarterly yes. year. Oh, they Every, can be looked at monthly, correct. but not just not so cut a check. Gotcha, gotcha, oh, gotcha, gotcha, totally gotcha. on board. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that, okay. the next one is, next bullet point is, the fireman will go back to being paid quarterly. Each fireman will fill out a weekly timesheet that will be signed by an officer. <laughs> Each month, the weekly timesheet will be turned into the town office. Quarterly, there will be a spreadsheet turned in for the department's payroll, along with all call sheets, training sheets, meeting sheets, and Sunday duty sheets. Um, Lorna has already drafted a weekly timesheet that we need to be using. But and you won't have a, if you get your call sheet and your Sunday duty sheet and a training sheet, that's the only time you're going to pay. So you're going to have, you're not going to have a weekly payout sheet other than the sheet you did. No, but it'll be a, a check, a way for Wanda to check um, her, if her hours are right. Are you just duplicating? You're duplicating, yes you are. Most definitely duplicating. Uh, we want to see the. I do want to see the call sheets. I do want to see the. You know, I want everybody to actually sign their own initials, and I want everybody to. Um, write oh, their own, you. I'm just write saying, own. if you're having them, you've already got them writing it down. Are you going to have them write it down twice? That doesn't make much sense. There's paying people to do the same thing for nothing. It's one more thing that you got to look at. It's well, probably going to be I wrong. Do. Well, it could be. At. It could be. I do payroll. I find duplication so, uh, is the, the easiest way to keep it all straight. But so the the, the two entries. Why is that better? I guess because Dale seems to understand exactly what you're doing, and I don't. So. Well, because you have if this all adds up right, and then your call sheets add up to the same thing, you know you're right. I do a payroll book when I work for my husband's company, you know, it all adds across this way, it all adds up this way, it's a duplication of... Right, but you don't come up with another timesheet to throw in I don't, head no. that. but that's what I'm saying. Because no. right now, you, if they have a call, they have a fire call sheet. Right. Yeah. Everybody signs in or out, and this is how you figure out that Mike got two hours, Jody got three. Mm -hmm. So that's one way, yep. this week, you're going to get paid. The only other way you're going to get paid is if you had Sunday duty. Yeah. So you have a Sunday duty sheet. Right. Well, Mike's not on here. You're not getting paid. 
and then you have a training sheet. So okay. what she's saying now is to add another sheet so that if you fill out on any of these, now you got to write it on another sheet. You, oh, those, all those get added up and then at, put on that mask. And I'm, right. and I'm saying that the timesheet goes weekly to Lorna, so Lorna can keep track of it weekly and not be given six months worth of stuff. Or even a month. I think they ought to be doing them all every week. I mean, okay, we, we can do you know that. I mean? We can, we can get rid of the timesheet and just do them all weekly. That's so. what I would suggest. Yeah. So what fine. was what was the process where somebody would just draw a line in buyer call? That call six sheet. o'clock. So, here it and, says, and you would initial if you were present. Yeah. At the top it says, you know, what was it? It um, starts a fire or um, a lift assist mutual or aid, mutual aid or chimney fire, whatever. It, it identifies that. Then they have the trucks listed. And the drivers of the truck are supposed to initial who takes out the 820, which is the pumper, and who takes the 8. 50, which is the rescue truck, you know, and everybody has to sign. If you don't sign that, supposedly you don't get paid. So then there's a list of the fire department members, a place where they can initial if they showed up for the fire or not. And the next column is time in, time out, and somebody generally takes and goes, well, the fire, we started at 9.05, we were done at 11.05, and then draws a line down the... As though it applies oh, to every single person, uh, right. which might oh, not be the case. Which might not be the case. Right. Oh, so I then see. the firefighters are responsible to come over and initial. That, in fact, they, they were they, there and they exactly. can jump on that line. And sometimes, <laughs> they, <laughs> sometimes all the initials look very similar in writing style. <laughs> and sometimes, oh, uh, I gotcha. So like that's a line that very well would Yeah, well, if you could. <laughs> so, yeah. So the, that's where we're. That's where I was going. That's where. Um, it also seems like there would be some value in knowing, uh, mm -hmm. you know, on this mm -hmm. day, this truck was driven by this person. And that seems like you would want to know that. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah. Yeah, I would think. I mean, there's not that much activity over there. There's no reason they can't turn to Bayport weekly. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. let's we'll get rid of. The, they haven't seen the time, the weekly timesheets. So we'll get rid of the weekly timesheet and then just turn. All paperwork in. Yeah, weekly. That way, and then that way, Lorna can stay up. Right, right. and right. it's not this big. Oh my God, I got to deal with that. Right. Yeah, and if I, there's I, one I question, it gets answered. The one expression week. to everybody's exactly. mind, rather than three. Plus, they never get more than a week behind you. That's right. Right. If they get behind you a month, you know, I, okay, now. I'll, Do you yeah. want me to pay them every week? I don't. That's totally your call. That's up to you. I would. That's. Know I wouldn't. I mean, there's a lot of. Yeah. That's, that's, no, a, that, that's bi-weekly, whatever you want no, to do there, sense. but uh, okay. but I think getting the timesheets every week makes total sense. Right. Yeah, as far as how you want to add it up, and when they when you want to pay them or they want to get paid. Like I said, I know when I was on Guilford, and I think they still do. They get once a year. Yeah. They get it right before Christmas, kind of the same time. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. Right, and I think right. there's been some talk of that, but I don't. With the number. And it's not a huge number, but you've got people coming and going. You've got mm. people who were there in January, and by the time you pay them in December, they only worked two weeks in January, mm. and they moved to Arizona. Yeah. Or well, we just had them. some people quit. Right. Did, did they get paid? They did. It okay. It was a pay week. Okay. Well, it was it was the Quarter. June. It was the half year pay pay um, bar. Right. So they did get paid. So. Okay, so we'll move on. Longer it's in our bank, the longer it's kind of like that. That's right, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. So if they only want to get paid once a year, twice a year, three times, four times a year, whatever. Yeah, and as long as your yeah, as long as it doesn't stays current so that yeah. when you have to write those checks, it's yeah. not like you're running around trying to find out information from, from yeah. eight months ago. Yeah. I, it doesn't matter when. Yeah, once a year. So a year. if they want to, so you, you're saying don't go back to quarterly, just do... Whatever works for you guys. Yeah, whatever... As long as your paperwork, you know what I mean? Because I, I think that's kind of what you was thinking, right? Get the paperwork. Right, get the paperwork, yeah. Right. If you can, whether it's an Excel sheet or however, I don't know how the system works, whether or not you can keep adding hours. If you can do that in the system, then I would just stay, keep it to whatever. Okay, so we'll just but even if you have to come up with an Excel sheet to keep track of it until it's time mm -hmm. for your totals. Yeah. yeah, the Excel sheet already exists, so that'll be, that'll be fine. Okay, so next bullet point. Um, 
All officers should be able to locate the forms and paperwork that the department is required to keep. Um, just because um, most of your officers are not available during the day anyway, so if you need to <laughs> locate, um, you need an officer who knows where all that stuff is. So. And you don't think that's currently the case? I know it's not currently the case because back last fall when we did the insurance um, stuff, there was one officer available, he came in, but had there, were, there were several of things that he couldn't find because they'd been moved or, yeah, so. Okay. Yeah, he's going to be the one in town and he definitely needs to know where all the, all the paperwork is. Do the, does the fire department have an area where they can have their files locked up? Or are they in a secured area? Their fire department is locked. The file cabinets are locked. That's the extent of it. So. But that's a little bit like my office because our office can be locked. All personnel files are in my um, file cabinet locked. So. Then that's legal. Yeah. yeah. I just want to make sure they're secured so nobody's yeah. going in. I didn't know they were in lock cabinets. They the have at least one cabinet to lock, and that's where. Okay. Next bullet point. The fire chief will regularly update the town manager and select board on the operation of the fire department. He will do so by attending one of the two select board meetings every month and reporting at that time. That obviously is the fire chief's responsibility. Um, I sometimes feel that communication between the fire chief and myself is lacking and thought that, that would be the easiest way to have everybody on the same same page. Um, Back to the personnel files just for one second. Mm -hmm. um, do you, would you see any value in all personnel files for Sangamon being in your office? I think so, yeah. Well, then, but... And so. He's still, whoever, the, the chief is still going to be responsible for maintaining those files. Right. He but you at least will have oversight over all personnel files. And it would provide better communication between you guys. He'd have to get, up, get yeah. to them. He'd have to yeah, he's gonna, you guys are going to coordinate on that. Mm -hmm. so we'll and it doesn't hurt for him to be able to bounce personnel questions off from you. Because right. uh, probably of all the aspects of liability for the town... It's around personnel. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and we know it's, uh, it doesn't seem like there's a very robust record keeping system right now, so it shouldn't be difficult to move. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Well, and if they're going to start turning in the timesheets weekly, it'll be available. Right. Every week when he's running them in. Excellent point. It's, yeah, I mean, it's going to take a little bit of, you know, forethought and stuff like that because for example I'm just thinking about when we do the physicals you know they scurry around and and look for the forms and then they have to go into each person's file to bring up last year's form so if the office is closed because we always do them on Sunday right but Brady will know in advance should right. coordinate with you you guys yeah, and it's gonna yeah. need to be a more those little forms could go right into a nice handy little one little thing go right over with them yep, and yep. fire yep. chief can take right care of that right right so I'm instead of uh, yeah. uh, the, the, the chief knew, I assume the chief knew you were working on this project. I had told him back at the very end of the investigation that I was working on this. And did you offer, or did you guys talk about collaborating on this? I offered the... Have, have you at all, or is this all, all yours? No, all mine. Okay. So, so you have any input one way or another how to make this better? No. I'm thinking about it, putting this in action, and if it doesn't work, I'll re <laughs> <laughs> revamp it. We'll keep going. Probably hear from you again. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, once we do a final document of this, I will sit down with him and we will, because at the very end, I've put a timeline here. Um, so there's one more bullet point. Um, the number of firemen on our roster is dangerously low, with half of the firemen having two years of experience or less. 
claim to increase their numbers needs to be put into action. This claim also needs to outline the chain of command of fires during the day so that an experienced firefighter is in charge of all fire scenes. Uh, I put the fire department officers in charge of that, and we'll discuss that in just a second. And then I said the persons listed after each bullet point needs to work on addressing these issues in a timely fashion. The town manager, board of selectmen, and the fire chief will discuss our progress at the September 16th board meeting. Okay. So I don't want to just yeah, leave it sit out there. Yeah, you want a deadline. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll be the chief's one meeting for September. that month, and then we'll know in October how much progress we made right. okay. in that month. Good. So good. So back to our roster being dangerously low. We're down to 16 people, five of whom show up most of the time um, or are seasoned fire, what I call seasoned firefighters, five or six of whom have been there two years or less but seem to be dedicated to um, being available and, and learning and um, going to all calls. And then I've got five or six who show up less than I have said less than 10 hours of, out of, out of um, well, that's six months, less than 10 hours. You got how many of that, at that level of participation? A third. A third. So you really have like 10, yeah. 10 fire hours. 10, yeah. How do you 10? How many we got during the day? A couple. Half? Couple? A couple, meaning two. Out of 10, well, let's see. 10 out of that. You've got one in the, in the seasoned. You had two in the season. You've got... But neither one of them pack people, right? Neither one are pack. And you've got... Most of that um, two-year and under group are available. And... Well, a couple of them might be available, depending on the work. Right. But, they, but looking at the last six months, they showed up pretty... Mm -hmm. Regularly, pretty active, pretty active. Mm -hmm. But well, they have jobs where they might be here today, but not right. be here tomorrow. So right, they might see. be out. The stars yeah. aligned, so they were available. But that doesn't I mean see. It always. I right. see. Yeah. Now, as far as um, uh, um officers, mm -hmm. uh, we know that two of the officers are out of town during the day. Who? The chief. The assistant chief. The deputy assistant chief and the first captain are all out of town. Um, the next captain has just been promoted. He's been there just over two years. He is in town. But so he it, he would be man up during the day. You also have this interests me because when we. We also have an engineer who mm. has shown up for most everything, but nobody has said, well, oh, he'd be the perfect person to be in charge of a fire scene. I just don't know. I don't know why that is, and so that's something we'll need to discuss. Mm. I'm not sure. Mm. Okay. I don't want to mention names. I don't think right, right. that's appropriate. But right. No, I think we should try to avoid that. Right, um, right. But uh, it's interesting. You guys probably all remember uh, the meeting that we had. This was this predates you, Brian, but uh, it was it was May 9th, twenty eighteen. We met then. Uh, the chief and the assistant chief were reversed. But, mm -hmm. uh, they were both here, right. uh, and they they were pretty forthcoming with how dire the enrollment was and how low the participation was. Mm -hmm. And at that time, there was a hundred percent more firefighters than we have now. Correct. The, in, 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 I think it was May 9th, we, and I know there's a, a, a recorded, the recording of that meeting, and they just said it was, there's nothing they could do about it, they, they were going to try, and blah, 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 and here we are now with, with 10, 10 firefighters, maybe two during the day. And you see, I see a lot of fluctuation in terms of you'll get a, two or three firefighters on and they last two weeks That's or what they said a month. In, or, you know, and it, uh, 
the cycle of it takes a while before you get anybody who will actually stay and commit. Yeah, I, I remember Jeff saying that people would start, it seemed like mm -hmm. they're all going home, and then they don't show up anymore. So, yeah. And that was two years ago. Yeah. Um, well, the same cycle is still. It, but I guess my, the reason for bringing this up is we've been working on this for over two years, and instead of even, we haven't even been able to hold right. our ground, right. we're cut in half. Right. Um, so something isn't working. Um, I mean, we definitely, I mean, we got to go in a different direction, something. I mean, we're paying for a fire service that we no longer have. And we recently lost two or three firefighters. I don't know how many Sangerville firefighters are in surrounding towns showing up, but there's more than a few. Mm -hmm. I know of a few. I don't know. Obviously, I don't know all of them, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a good first step, I think. Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't know what the answer is. I wish I knew what the answer was, um, but... Well, I mean, two years ago, we were all accused because we brought it up because we wanted to close the department. Obviously, I don't see the board as in the game to close the department. We equally fund it every year, but there's something going on because we're, we're in worse shape now than we was then. Mm -hmm. So, well, if we were in bad shape then, and they said we were, <laughs> <All right. laughs> we are now in dire straits. I just, to me, I don't understand how, and I don't think this is a, a, a long-term solution, but how can we have the numbers we have without a plan during the, uh, do we already have automatic mutual aid, or is there anything in place that's, so that we all can feel a little better that we don't have anybody here? As far as I know, there's no automatic. Mutual aid. Could it be? Oh, okay, it so that be. decision I, could be made. I believe uh -huh. that decision that's could be made if that's the, mm -hmm. the best, um, you know. Yeah, they have to call for mutual aid now. But well, I mean, we can set. I mean, a no, long no. time ago, like when there was a structure fire, this this didn't work very well. But there was a plan that they wanted to try that if you had a structure fire, say if it was in whatever out on Pine Street in Sangerville and. Dover automatically got called, or mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Right, it should work well. But well, the yeah. problem was is they just did it off a certain call, so it was like everybody was everybody all there. Everybody else showed up. You know what I mean? So yeah. it, was, it was a lot of trucks on the road for no reason. But, uh -huh. yeah. but I think when you don't have anybody, we're not looking for a lot of trucks, we're just looking for a truck because right. we're getting to a set of numbers that's questionable. Are you going to get a truck on the road? Well, and even, my concern is even if we did. If, if we've got, it's very conceivable that we could have two or three firemen show up, combined experiences maybe three years, and they're in charge. Right. Right. Yeah. Somebody could, I mean, I, it would be like putting me in charge. I have no idea right. what to do. Where, but however, if we, if we made mutual aid automatic, what would happen then? Who would be in charge? We still would be in charge. We would still be in charge. Unless somebody said otherwise. Well, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how. <laughs> I can see that going very downhill very quickly into everybody fighting over who's who's in charge and who wants to play. Who wants to be? I mean, I would. Well, I mean, if 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 I were a freshly minted firefighter and right, maybe had six months, it just so happens that I live in town. Yeah. I, and then somebody from Gilbert or Dover or Dexter shows up who's been fire, fighting fires for a decade. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't even be a hesitation. A right. All right. Okay. But let's say you have a big structure fire and it's in Sangerville and both Dover and Guilford roll out and now you've got two, two mutual aid fire chiefs and, and do, are they going to fight over the whole thing? I don't or think anybody's going to fight over No. And Dale, I mean, you can I'm, speak from experience because you have been a firefighter. I, I think, and, and I've spoken to some mm -hmm. fires, I think when the chips are down and they're out of fire, there is no, oh well, I'm in control. I think everybody... Yeah, I mean, there's a working. level of respect with everybody. Sure. And I don't yeah. see where, I don't see a Dexter and Dover chief right. fighting because I'm going to Sangville. No. You know what I mean? It would be, I don't think... Whoever, be right, that there, it seems like, I, I've been assured that... When they're at a fire, it's everybody is working to the utmost of their capabilities and trying and, you know. And I would, I mean, if it was, if I would see it the other way, if it's a Sangerville fireman, 
that doesn't have much secure seniority or much experience, I would think they would be happy to have somebody else yes. coming in to help well, but guide the, and steer it. And that's and not my concern. Is job. my concern is that we don't if let's say we have an inexperienced technical firefighter and he or she doesn't want to admit that they couldn't handle it. That's not a good situation. No. No. Yeah, you have to know. Well. Whereas if we had a policy that said, you don't even have to handle it. It automatically goes to a senior officer from another town. I'm just making up sure. one. Right. So now we've taken that responsibility away, but they don't have to think about it. Right. If, so if the door chief shows up, he's in charge right. by Sangerville policy. Mm -hmm. Unless Sangerville has an officer of equal... Right. I mean, we, I'm, right. I'm just we, brainstorming really this. But. Need yeah, the just fire department to think about this because who knows better? That's right. Correct. That's, that's why I would love to see their input on this. That's right. They need to brainstorm. I'm sure they want everybody to be as safe as we do. Right. I mean, right. that's our. Well, that's what it's all about. I mean, it's. Right. We have a department where we're lacking. We need to figure out how do we make it so the town still has what they need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they're. they're God, there's going to be a day when there's a house on fire and there's people in it. And mm -hmm. now split-second decisions are going to matter. And if if right. we're in the unfortunate situation where we got two people with six months experience, right. that's awful. And, and again, when you have lack of experience, you don't know when to call for help. Well, of course not. You know, right. you, know, you don't realize. Am I doing it too quickly? Am yeah. I doing it right? Yeah. So if we, if we if know that we have out. this reality, right. we maybe need to build a strategy that adapts for this reality mm -hmm. where if you know, um, and, and if our chief is there fine we're all set because right. he's going to know what to do right right, right. yep so. but 10 people <laughs> three or four of which are here during the day is just that's yeah. that's it's not acceptable no no and, and, and you know you mentioned we never really quibble over the money side of this thing we, we, no, but I've actually, I've kind of, I've had a conversation with another town about mutual aid and everybody's opinion or views of what mutual aid is, and yeah, it's there when you need it. it the design of it was, it wasn't for what we're talking about, it was for when you have that big structure fire and you need more physical help. Mm -hmm. You've got all your resources and it's not enough, so you're going to bring outside people. Mutual aid was never developed because I can't get enough people. And I'm going to let have you come help me. Right. It's, that we're you're basically, we're all. just planning on you doing it all. Right. I mean... Yeah. We only have two people, but hey. Because at the end of the day, really, we're getting to the point of where we're just taking our dollars and moving them to a different town. Mm -hmm. We don't have... We can't field our fire department, so we're just asking other towns to do it for us. And you would know this better, but it would seem to me mutual aid also serves the function of backup. If I'm Guilford, I might be handling this terrible fire... But if something else happens in Guilford, 100%. I need to know that Sangerville's Correct. got my back. Right. Mm -hmm. And right now, Sangerville couldn't have anybody's back right. because they we can't feel their own. We can't even do our own. Right. So if if Guilford knows every time we have a fire, they basically are going to fight our fire. There's nobody to help Guilford. Correct. Right. So it's yeah, it's not as simple as just saying it's no problem. We got mutual aid. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we and there is a we are spending. You know, I know. Fifty to seventy thousand dollars a year on this. Right. And so if you're spending fifty to seventy thousand dollars a year, not that I want to close the fire department, but if you're spending that much, you expect to have right. that level of service. Right. Now, with mutual aid, do we do we compensate the other towns when they do come? Oh, so that's it's just part of their payroll. You help me, I help you. Correct. Yeah. It's part of our fifty to seventy thousand dollars a year. I mean, if Bridie did the math to. If you figure that out to how many calls a year were Sangerville only calls, mm -hmm. it's pretty small. Pretty small. It's not very many that's Sangerville only. Uh -huh. Now, if you start talking mutual aids to help, that's mm -hmm. where the call volume is. Which is fine, I mean, because it's yeah, the same deal. Those calls that we mutual, have, they come to us. So. We had more mutual aid calls than actual um, structure fires or. Or, um, well, we're getting fires. called to a different town. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's averages, I don't know, six to eight. I don't eight. know what the numbers are now. Um, well, and, and those fluctuate because you can't predict how many right. fires. Um, we had a heavy period of calls in May and June, but we haven't had any huge calls lately, you know, so 
And and it's it's so arbitrary because it's as though we're not pulling our weight. Because when if Guilford calls us for mutual aid and we only show up with three firefighters, well, it's almost to the point now where you're like, four. oh, four. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but when you do that, that means we're done. Right. We don't have anyone. We here. might get you four, but guess what? We're calling Dexter to be on our standby now because we don't have anybody. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. If there's yep. a car accident, we can't help anybody. Right. right. Hmm. It's getting to be a pretty scary number. We need either more people or a better plan. Mm -hmm. Or both. But this current, I mean, if we do this again in two more years like we just did, <laughs> there is, this is not even going to be a discussion. There won't be anybody to talk to. No. Well, number one is safety. Right. Number two is there's purpose. We're fighting fires and answering emergency calls, and we have to be able to do that. And then number three is the town's liability in, um, in not turning out a fire department that mm -hmm. we, have, we have the numbers and we have the things we need. So that's where this action plan is headed. Um, hopefully we'll have, we have something, something. Next, next board meeting because that was a time frame I put. Um, well, I think the more people in town understand this, there's going to, I mean, I've already had enough conversations or people not happy at the moment, but the more and more that this comes around and people actually understand that, oh, we don't have a real, we don't have a full fire department anymore. I've already heard people asking about the numbers. Why are, mm -hmm. you know, why do we, why does it cost as much if we don't have as many people there? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. You know? I mean, so. Well, and, and why do we have able-bodied firefighters going to different Dover, or Guilford? Yeah. Why is that happening right. when we're already a skeleton crew? Mm -hmm. uh, we also had expenditure issues uh, in 1819. We actually couldn't even pay for oil over there because we had overspent our budget. Do you know where we stand this year? I can't give you the number okay. right now. It's not the... Yeah. I'd like to just, I just want to watch it because I don't want to overspend again. Back in July when I spoke to you, it was right on um, where it needed to be at 50 some odd percent. But I'm, but I'm still, confused about that. Why, if we, if our numbers are down to this point, this would be a question you may want to ask, but why are we 50% through our budget? I mean, we don't have the labor, we don't have the... You do have a Labor's up. You mean, I mean so so like um, well, obviously we had to take into account the fair wage for main rates of, of a buck an hour, but it, it's inter interesting to see the numbers of how, who shows up to what what fire scene and um, so you have fewer people working more. Is that yeah. fair to say? What, yeah. I think. So we must have more fires. We had we had a busy May and June. We had a really May and June. Yeah. Um, of course, I haven't paid since then because June was um, the mm -hmm. end of that pay period. So mm. the uh, the year that we went over, uh, he they they felt they needed some equipment and mm -hmm. obviously hadn't budgeted correctly. Uh, they, they just bought more stuff than they could have bought. Yeah, they overspent. Yeah. They spent money they didn't have. Yeah. So we'll I'll bring those numbers for the next yeah, yep. meeting. That would be great. Okay. I could actually, with my the actual, give you a minute to sign off. I can pull the actual numbers. So. Isn't that nice having a laugh? Yeah. Just <laughs> <laughs> wanted to throw that out there. Not even thinking of it. Right Makes you wonder how you ever got by without one. No. Next we need is to get rid of one of these boards and put yeah. a monster big screen out. That would be great. I'd like yes. that. And no paper. No more paper. Yeah, I'd like that. Well, your, your new town office will have that. That would be great. Oh, here's the order on the agenda.
So ordinance, did you want to talk about that still? Um, I sent you all the corrections I made. Did you see anything immediate that needs mm -hmm. fixing? Because um, what, for which one now? The fire department. Fire department. I, I, I didn't see any. I thought it looked good. Yeah, I thought so. It Short and sweet. Yep. Um, now that was mentioned too that with the chiefs that you was going to be working on that. Have you had any input from them at all? No. No input from the fire department on their, their ordinance? No. Okay. I did give them copies so that right. they could see it. I gave them copies of MMA's mm -hmm. um, version. I mean, I like our version. Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty mm -hmm. short, sweet, to the point. There's nothing extra in there. Yeah. Well, it, and it corrects some glaring problems right. that we have. Yeah. I mean, yeah. our current ordinances. Do we want to send? We're not even living it. Make sure that we're okay before we go any further. With it? I don't think it would hurt. Uh, to send it, I was going to send it to MMA. I just want to make sure. Yeah, we, oh, we if had looked, anything. We yeah. had looked at it, and we had. I had written a lot of things down mm -hmm. on my copy, yeah. and I yeah, was no, just you got sure it. I think you I got everything. It. I think it looked good. Yep. Trio. <laughs> <laughs> the library still still closed. Yes. Mm. They have uh, twenty five thousand two hundred eighty nine dollars and one cent left in their budget. Twenty five. Yes. To eighty nine or what? Remaining. Remaining. They've expended. And this through to December 31st. Yeah, so they, they haven't spent a right. lot. Yeah, I guess. Um, I just don't know what they're ordering. Well, no, no, I. I, I did I just would hate look at the um, last AP warrant just to prove a bigger uh, $400 bill for radio maintenance. Um, that would be the biggest. I guess my, my thought is if you saw uh, an acceleration of activity or any, if you just felt like, you know what, I would like more oversight on this. Uh, please feel free. Speak yeah. up. Speak yeah. up. Radios and supplies from Yankee Communications, 401 and 50. Um, because I believe uh, 
if we chose to, mm -hmm. we could go, we could implement some sort of purchase order system or something like that, and then you would know. Okay. But that, I, I think we'd probably wait for your mm -hmm. call on that. Right, I mean, we did that with Public Works. Yep. Exactly right. Sus suspended all spending unless it worked. Went through the town manager. And then that way they were at all. Yeah, we Everybody was on the same page. We don't want any huge surprises. No. Don't you like small ones? No. no. <laughs> Right. Okay. So I'll leave that up in case we need any other budgetary information. But right now, Brian, do you feel comfortable the way it is? Right now we're okay. Um, like I said, there's that one bill. It doesn't seem to be outlandish or right. um, something that would be on a wish list. Okay. Okay. So if we don't need to go over... You're on the other B. Oh, the other B. Hmm. I'll have you know I changed this four times <laughs> and the computer ate it three of them. BB. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the cemetery ordinance. Okay. I know we're not near a final one, but I want to at least look at it again because come annual meeting, I want to have <laughs> one in place that we want um, to be approved. Can I ask so, you a question? You sure can. Do we have to have an ordinance? Oh, God. No. Okay. We don't if have you, to. This is my well, concern. Well, okay. There are a couple of things we have to approve by town meeting. Okay. Legislatively, the fees. Okay. Um, but do we have to have an ordinance? No. My only concern is, is we were kind of embedding yourself into just what we just went through with the fire department from 92. You always have to look up. Are you better off to have, if you want an or if you need an ordinance to set your fees or or whatever, I think that's do the very minimal you need to do mm -hmm. and then flip this to a policy so that if you need to change this for any reason at any time, you bring it back to us, we talk about it, we change and it's done. Whereas if we lock this all this into as an ordinance and something happens Oh, whoops, I wish this was different. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. So the it. ordinance essentially grants the authority to create the policies you need. That's, that's the minimum ordinance we want. Right. Well, yeah, we could. Um, and then I you've got full, but then I'm just, and that's how I'm looking at it is if we leave it as a policy, you've got full control still. Yeah. If you need to, because, I mean, a lot of this stuff, you go to town meeting and it's going to be all over. Half the people aren't going to care, the other half, it's going to go over. Yeah. yeah, and, and four it's years from matter. now, you got a different select board, and now you got to revisit all of this, and right. instead you can say, you know what, I need to treat this policy. So maybe we look at this like we looked at the fire department, where yep. it's a two-page... Yep. Yep. yep, whatever you can do as yeah. minimal as possible in reference to your policy. Meet the state statute, and then the rest goes into yep. the policy. And then that way... The I was going to put it all in policy, but I couldn't do that. Well, so, and I, no, so but now just, yeah, I would have too if you could, yeah, I agree right, with you, yeah. yeah. Do the minimal we need to do in the, under the ordinance, so we're in compliance and nobody can. Yeah, but like the authority to sell a lot, that yeah. you, that has to be in an ordinance. You yeah. can't. So I get that. So, so we, but the very minimal. But does it have to be in an ordinance? Because we just vote on it every year. Well, I'm I, I'm, I'm assuming you can't sell town that. property without having authority to do it. You get authority every year, town meeting. Right. Right. Which we makes it an it. ordinance. Right. It's part of your warrant. So. But a policy, that would just be. Right, but we, we're granting authority through a Warren article. We're not, we're not we don't have an actual an ordinance. cemetery article or ordinance that's referenced that we're approving. No, and, and it doesn't sound like we really want to go that route. We want a policy. Right. The only thing we want in an ordinance is what you absolutely have to have under. So giving the select board the authority to sell lots and to set the price on those lots because that's one of the things that. Right, well, but we yeah. Do that through a warrant article. Right, you could do that through a warrant article. Like well, that, I mean, that's what we've done. A annual warrant yep. article. And then add, everything add else to, is policy. Add to the list and make everything else policy. It's yeah. kind of like your interest on on unpaid taxes. Every year that gets revisited. Right. Every yeah. year you set it. Yeah. Right. So you just revisit the authority to sell the lots. Mm -hmm. And that's the other thing that I do and like about the, that. And set the price. Yep. If yep. you if you ever needed to bring it up, you yep. just write the article that way. Yep. That's right. right. You know. 
if you put it in the ordinance, you've got to vote on the ordinance. Amendment yeah. to the ordinance. Yeah. Works for me. That's great. That was that was good. Thank you. 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 Alright, so we're going to write an article instead of an ordinance. Yeah. And then at some other... Well, you're still yeah. working on... You're going to state that. That's just going to and be a policy. policy yep. Yeah. yeah, and then we'll just leave the article yep. the way it's always been. But we can work on it during the winter. But you can work now, on it. And we can now, implement it any meeting it's done. Correct. Right. And then amend, and then change it the next meeting if, if you want like, to. Yeah, if that's yeah. already getting to the point where you want to tr get it going... Get it verbiage to a policy so we can sign it and we'll get it up. Yep. And then we can you can tweak it, you can amend it, you can do whatever you need to do as it goes along. Well, we're the only enforcement of it. Right. So. right. All right, so that covers that then. And I just have a question. If when we do the warrant, we'll, we would say that we're just giving authority for us to sell them and set the price. But we're not going to say the price, correct? In that warrant, will we? No. Just, no. We'll just say set the price. Yeah. Because, and then we can have a price. Because my issue here, like okay. I, w I want to do, um, we're doing deeds and we're sending them to the registry. That up to our cost. Right. But okay. Because it. it's because it needs to go through right. town meeting. We don't have an ordinance. Right. I have to wait. To, we have to eat that cost until town meeting. So oh, if, the, if the ordinance just absolutely. says that you... you but know, if we had the ordinance, we wouldn't have been able to enforce what we're doing. So, <laughs> so. It's catch-22 on this one. Well, it is. But. <laughs> so that's good. That, that streamlined that up tremendously. Okay. Um, C, proposed layout for the town office. All right. Um, we had spoken to Dustin Lander. He had given us this one mm -hmm. board drawing, mm -hmm. um, and then we had decided that maybe we wanted daylight basement and wanted to see some numbers so that we could figure out whether or not that was doable or what we might need, how we might need to rethink this. And so he finally gave me some numbers today. He been promising them to me for a week. I sent them to you in an email, but um, now oh, that was sorry, that was this afternoon, so you may not have seen yep. it. I saw it. Okay, I have it. I peeped. You saw it. Yes. Okay. Um, question. Yes. So this is this is for a, with daylight. This footprint. So what I asked him was to use this okay. same footprint. I asked him for. Basically, all the bells and whistles. So, in this footprint, you would have the um, community room downstairs. You would have, I asked for a safe, I asked for bathrooms. So, this is first and second floor. First and second floor. So, you bells might, and whistles. You might not, I didn't <laughs> yeah. ask for. There's a lot of room to get out in here. There is. There is. So, there's room for the library on the upper floor. And the community room is big enough on the bottom floor that we could easily hold town, town meeting. Which would be awesome. Mm -hmm. So we, all, we haven't put aside much money for groundwork, like parking lot, that sort of thing. No. Um, so that's, we gotta, that's significant. So what he gave me for numbers is site work, 55,000, foundation, 35,000 with a deduction of 5,000 for just frost walls and a slab instead of a daylight basement. Heating, he said 30,000. Electric, 15,000. Plumbing, 18,000. Materials and labors for me, inside finish to code, I don't know. Rock saw. I don't know what rock saw insulation it's, is. It's um, sound and water. Um, okay. And proof. Okay. Rock is. And then spray foam would add 10,000. All openings handicap accessible would add, this is 150, but I think it's 50. Well, oh, I took it that's his total bill to do that. 303. Oh, well, no. 150. No, it's mean his, that's, yeah. 150 yes. is his, Correct. 303. Yeah. Okay, yep. Correct. That's how, it took me a minute actually. Okay. I screwed up too. Okay, good. <laughs> it's like, why did he do that? And then he just then says, says, gotcha. These are just very rough ideas, so we really need a building to spec out first, just so everyone knows. Thanks. Let me know if you have any questions. So the purpose of this exercise was to see, is this too much? Do we need to shrink it? Do we need to revamp it? Um, 
and we weren't absolutely sold on this floor plan. There's some things that we would like to change and mm -hmm. would probably change before we talk to Dustin again. Mm -hmm. So that is where we at. He um, got a quote for the site work from Herrick Excavation. That's where that number came from. He got a quote for the foundation work from French Construction. Um, again, we're just so, but is his site work, is that actually, I mean, Mike had concerns about the parking and stuff like that. Is that part of that number? I, the site work, um, building the road, but not of, we're not talking paving or anything. Um, well, that's why I was just confused, because, I mean, well, we, we're kind of going to put the building pretty close to what's already cleared. So there's not a, there's not that kind of money for site work. Unless you're going to be building a parking lot or doing something. Yeah, I think that's, he was going to build a parking lot. He didn't ask Zach to quote it. Paved or not. Paved or not. And he didn't ask Zach to quote it um, if we weren't doing a daylight basement. So okay. so that's two entrances and a, a drive around the building. Sure. And, um, I'm envisioning like tier parking. I mean, you you, drive, you might have you park access park to the first story, and then you, as you go around back, you're kind of going down grade. A large parking area down there for a town, you'd have to accommodate a town meeting, right? Yeah. Which could be well, if I just like that. 100 cars. A double grade, so that way there yeah. you've got mm -hmm. your 100% mm -hmm. handicap. The question is, how, how how big a parking lot are you going to need? How close are you going to be to the gazebo by the time you're done? Oh, you're going to be in the. I don't care about parking 100 cars. We got a road. You can fill it. Right, oh, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, I we could go all the way to the lake if you had to. Well, and you can go right down right. 23. I mean, they do it every time this is a sporting oh. event. Yeah. That's not but I mean, yeah. but I mean, yeah, once I, a well, year for town. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to build a parking lot for a once a year event. No. Sure. No, that's a good point. But, yeah, that but we also could use some parking over there for other events. Very yeah. true. I mean, we I mean, have, I would make a decent parking lot, but I wouldn't kill the entire place just to build a parking lot. Right, right, right. Because there again, it's the same thing. They're... You're talking about building a parking lot for the events. We've got by all summer long for town events or town use with nobody parked in the road. So the parking lot you're talking about is only for fire rec events. <laughs> yeah, that's, that and was the only time we had overflow over there. But we had substantial overflow. Yeah, but I don't really want to spend all kinds of town money. But no, no, I agree with you on that, totally. But it would, get, it would be dual use in that yeah. sense. Um, and maybe, I don't know, maybe we would start with gravel. I think it's a good, I think we ought to get the planning board involved in that between um, the stream and the water. And, and where we can and... Well, I just... Here's the other thing that I don't, sorry, that I don't see here is like septic or any of that. I think it's part of the plumbing. Plumbing? I had 18 grand, he's got to be, there's got to be something there. Okay. I mean, I don't we're know. talking a couple of bathrooms. He did I, mention you know, okay. that we needed right. a septic. Well, that's why I figured. Yeah, I mean, what, six, septic, what, 15 grand? Yeah, 10 ish. Okay. Wouldn't be that bad. Okay. You've got a pump that's downstairs, part of the pump. but that's not bad for a I mean, we're board. assuming you, there's a well over there, but there was. we might have to drill one. Yeah, and it's 2500 mm -hmm. bucks. Yeah, that's well, and there's also a well over by the food shack. Yeah. There's two oh. wells on oh. the site right now. Oh. So I don't know. It may or it may not. I don't. No, and you know, we're all, and I'm not. Saying that we haven't already imagined the very best spot, but maybe there's a better spot over there. I, I don't, you know, maybe, you know, maybe the basketball court should go away. I'm not. I mean, I don't know. Maybe we need to look at it before we actually say this is not where we want to go. Mm -hmm. Particularly. Well, I don't think you're building it down to the water. No, no, no. no. Don't do that. That'd be cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't complain if you I do, to that, do that. The <laughs> contour that would be the best spot to have your daylight basement because it rolls down. You could put it right in that. We're not using that for anything right Stop now. Stop tempting me. <laughs> it's not a, honestly, if you walk in and look at how that lot works, mm -hmm. the two places you're going to do it would be best is right near the, by the stream or on the back side of that, off to the right of the boat landing because that drops down naturally. Yeah. You could easily put a daylight basement in either one of those spots. Rather than out in the middle of a flat field. Oh yeah, you don't want to do that in a flat field. So I really, honestly, terrible. up by that, up by that boat landing, this is probably your best spot to put. 
Um, we'll assuming see during the day, <laughs> assuming you kind of leave it in the area that we're looking at, you might we might want to push it as close to the stream as we can. We're going to pick up a lot of unused real estate. I mean, right now when you look at that, there's a lot of forest there. Well, I think this is that's why I'd like to get the planning board involved right mm -hmm. now because yeah. where we can build. Yeah, that's because that. I still don't want to give up the thought of putting that road in there. Yeah, 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 yeah and yeah. it could even be that you could, could access it through the, the parking lot. That's right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't we do that? Why don't we throw this to the planning board? I See spoke, if we can get them involved. Okay, I spoke to Jerry once in passing when I ran into him someplace. I will make it more official. Mm. And um, their meeting is which Thursday? First, I thought. It was a couple weeks ago. I was there. No, it'll be tomorrow. Well, we had one on the 20th, but that was a special oh. one. That was the week before. So it's that the first, Can we get them to add it on our second. calendar? Yeah. On the town, the website? Well, we're going to talk about the website tonight, okay. maybe. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. Yeah. Um, and maybe, uh, you know, one or more of us should attend the mm -hmm. meeting to kind of get the ball rolling. But, I mean, we could even have a workshop with them out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but That'd be so great. you want to yeah. meet out. That'd be great. Also, just a correction, Roxall is fire and sap. It's not moisture? You had my interest when you said that. I, didn't know, I never knew what that was. I, was oh, I put so, so much rocks all the time. It's funny. It's called safe and sound. So I, because I was thinking about it after I said water, I know it's sound because when you put it up, it makes it soundproof. Um, but I think it's fire. I think it's a fire break. Well, you will have to look it up. Okay. It's called safe and sound. Um, the spray foam, I think we need to think about that because... Spray right, foam where? In, as insulation. Let me tell you. Because... My vote will be no. My vote will probably be no because spray foam is a, um, Vapor barrier, and if you get Mold. your vapor barrier on the wrong side, yeah, yeah. if you do it the wrong way, you've got yeah. major issues. Right. Every to me, I'm a firm believer that buildings need to be need, need to breathe. breathe. Yes. And yes. spray foam eliminates a building from breathing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so. we had we had an issue. We built the dry kilns and put in spray foam and had the vapor barrier on the wrong side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. I'll call the planning board. Um, do we want? We've got we've got the fire department coming for the next board meeting. Do we want to look at? I would have a they, workshop with them anytime. That they, yeah. they might be meeting like to tomorrow. Get, well, that's is it the first Thursday or the second Thursday? Well, we fine. If they're meeting tomorrow, let us. If you want to let, let us, know. I'd be more than willing to come tomorrow. And it may be the second Thursday. And just to talk to them about it. I think yeah, it's the second with brainstorming they and, and, both and the see if they are up for a workshop. Okay. So how does that work? If it's their meeting, and we and we still need to call at our workshop where we're all in attendance, or can we all just attend I, their I, meeting? I cannot be there tomorrow. Night. Okay. I think it's the second Thursday. So I mean, okay. if you just want to go, you you can Tomorrow's go. Tomorrow's the first. Talk to them. Okay. It's not tomorrow. I don't think it's tomorrow. Is it? The, I think it's the second Thursday. It's on the I was thinking I went to. It's on the recently. calendar in the. Okay, you did, you did. You're yeah. absolutely right. But Bridie said that was a special meeting. Yeah, no, the special was the 20th. I mean, yeah, they just had a special the other night. For what? I don't know. <sighs> okay. Okay, the 10th. 10th is the next meeting. So the meeting. second Thursday. The second meeting. Okay. Can you so buy my call, Jerry? You can yeah. heads up and then... Post it tomorrow. That'll give everybody in town mm -hmm. enough notice to that we're concerned. That'll give them a turn off. Well, we have parking there. We have. <laughs> oh, are we going to? Well, if we're going to do it, if it's their meeting, we can't do it there. Right. If we're going to do their we meeting, a, we we'll have to do it here with them. We could do a site eval, and then they could have their meeting. We could do that. We could do that. Yeah. If if they're all, check with Jerry if he's willing to do that. All right. Because we yeah, don't want to disturb yeah, his meeting. Right. But if they yeah. are, let's set it up. Right. And what time is it in planning board's meeting? They start at six thirty. Oh, so yeah, we'd have time that. earlier than that. Maybe. Yeah, we would maybe. do a five o'clock. I don't know what all of the rest of them okay. have for 
work schedules, but we might be able to. And it doesn't, if every single that. member isn't there, isn't, I mean, at least, you know, if, if, if Jerry and Matt are there, they, yeah, they can right. at least get an idea of what we're thinking. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. okay. Yep. Yes. Are we, are we done with the old business category? Let's move on to new business, which is excise tax exemption for veterans. I have just a quick question for you. Um, you guys approved an ordinance exempting eligible active duty military personnel from motor vehicle excise tax. Mm -hmm. We have an individual who seems to be taking advantage of this and doing five, six, seven registrations. It'd be the same individual that put us forward to doing this. It would. Yeah, because there's only one individual using it, right? Um, I think we've had a, one or two others, but um, yeah, that would be. I just wanted to know if you had foreseen this, if it nope. bothers no. you, and if it bothers you in any way, and if we wanted to revisit this. At some when, point. when you say vehicles, are they? Is it five trucks, or is it one truck, a boat, two ATVs? It's I mean, all vehicles, cars, trucks, except Seven? I think. I mean, maybe we should say the first one is excise free. You know, the five, primary. It's five or six. The primary it, we're not talking um, four wheelers or snowmobiles or boats. We're okay, talking, that's what I was trying to get. We're continue. talking. Because the original, th I thought, and my feeling was if, if, if someone's serving, particularly overseas, and their mm -hmm. vehicle's sitting here, that's they can't what, even that use it. That was what I that thought, was too, we but that's not how this ended up. That's it's, how we were sold. Is, that's what we were imagining. That's right. right. It's a, basically a lifetime service member that's stationed out of state. Yeah, this person I don't believe is ever coming back to Sagerville. No. And he's, he is stationed out of state, so he's using this. To As his to, primary residence. And sending a relative in to do... Huh. But we, uh, so the question is, under our ordinance, is what he's doing allowable? Yes. Correct. Mm. Is it, you believe? It, it's I not believe what so. was explained to us when no. we were doing this, no. I can tell you that. It says that, no. Um, vehicles owned by a resident of this municipality who is an active duty was on active duty serving in the United States Armed Forces and who is either permanently stationed at a military or naval post, stationed or based outside of this state, or deployed for military service for a period of more than 180 days, and who desires to register that residence of vehicles, with S in parentheses, in this state are hereby exempted from the annual excise tax imposed pursuant to 36 MRSA 1482. But how is he technically a resident if he's no longer living in the state? If you're deployed, you get to pick your resident. If you're deployed, but, no, it's, not what but he, the first part is there you go. an active duty who is on active duty serving in the U.S. Armed Forces and who is either permanently stationed at a military or naval post or base outside this state. So he's permanently stationed, not in Maine. So if you're working on an Air Force base in the Carolinas, Texas, right. Texas yeah. fine. How is that your? Why isn't that your residence? Is my I think you can. I think you can keep your home residency. Here. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I looked at. I don't the, know either. I that's looked at the state. That's the only correct answer. If that's not true, you can't do it. Right. Correct. Right. So right. that's what we need that's to find what out. I need to find, yeah. <laughs> okay. So I looked at what the state statute says, and these are the following are exempt from the excise tax, and then it lists um, certain veterans, automobiles owned by veterans. Well, that's veterans. I don't. I want active. Hold on. <laughs> active military. Okay, found it. Vehicles owned, including those jo jointly owned with a spouse by a person on active duty serving in the armed forces of the United States who is permanently stationed at a military or naval post station or base in the state. Joint ownership of the vehicle must be indicated in the vehicle's title documentation. A member of the armed forces um, stationed in the state or the, members of a, or the member's spouse who desires to register that member's vehicle in the state pursuant to the subsection shall 
present certification, which is the same, that's the same as ours. So basically, if you're permanently stationed here, you get free. Here, in Maine? Yes. Okay. The state will give you. Right. We've gone, exactly. we've gone in the opposite direction. If you're permanently stationed somewhere anywhere else, right. we will give you. Well, it sounds like we would do it here or anywhere else. Or do we, right now, we, you have to be out of Maine. Well, this one really says you have to be somewhere else. Okay. Which was our original intent. Was We felt like it didn't seem fair that a guy's in Kabul and, and we're right. making him pay excise tax on a truck and he can't drive. Right. I remember discussing right. it that. Yeah, way. I do. Right. <laughs> That's exactly right. But you've also given it to the person who's permanently in Texas. Correct. Mm -hmm. And now we're coming home. Or, or we not don't. for 20 years. <laughs> it's but it's state the same statute. deal. We don't have to. No, state statute just says if you're permanently stationed here, sure. you're in, a 20 in, year career person, then, then we'll, we'll give you free ex you know, right. no, no excess tax. No excess tax. State of Maine is not going to do that for you unless you live here. Right. right. And you're stationed. But our, we need to, if, I guess the question is first of all, is he within our ordinance? And perhaps our ordinance needs to be tweaked. I believe he is within your ordinance. I question it because you've got to prove that he can still have residency. I don't know how we can have residency in the state of Maine if he's... Military may be different. It, it may be, may and that's be, what I'm saying. Know, you need to find that out. Get a lot of well, assuming classes. that he can. Let's he assume can. that he can. Then he's all set. Then we, we need to decide whether we want to change the ordinance. Correct. Right. That's really... Well, yeah, it does say... In fact, even if he can't... <laughs> Uh, it clearly says residency in there. It does. That's why yeah. my... That may be our out. Well, I think and that was why we did this, because if you're a resident of Maine and you're in wherever, Iraq... Right. Great, then we're doing this. We're not going to ding you. Right. right. But if you're not a... But if you're not a resident of Maine and you're, you're a Texan, we're not going to let you... Correct. But his vehicle isn't even necessarily here, is it? No. No. no <laughs> it could be in Texas. That's right. I don't. I would say they were here occasionally. Maybe, yeah. I've seen he, was, he was. He was back recently. Yeah. Um, but so many vehicles. I don't know what he's doing. I really don't. But I suspect it's. Yeah. Well, well it could be friends and family playing. Yes. I mean, you don't know that's that, but the, it, I mean, that's, that's why I suspect. Yeah. I don't. I mean, then I don't know that. And it has to be registered in his name and or his spouse. Does he have a spouse? Yeah. I don't know. Think so. We don't check ownership of a vehicle, though, when you register it, do we? Yeah, right? You have I to mean, title. You yeah. have to have title, but can I register your vehicle? Yes. After the first registration. Uh, yeah. Okay, the there you go. So, do we know, in this instance, who owns these vehicles? Okay. Jeez. I think you got some homework. Yeah. Well, questions. I just wanted to bring it to your attention and see well, if, I appreciate if, it. if you see if you were seeing what I was seeing. Yeah, you're, I, I'm, I'm seeing it your okay. way now. Okay. Well, it's, yeah, I see you're starting to it, pique it, my interest. It has morphed. <laughs> it has, it has, it has potential to morph. Yeah. Uh, and if nothing else, we want some clarity on yeah, our ordinance. Yeah. yeah. I well, I, I really believe the intent of the ordinance, and that's why the residency piece is in there, it was for residents. That were stationed overseas in this one. Yeah, I remember that. that well, yeah, because if you're overseas, you're coming home and you're coming home. Sure, you're coming home. Right. But if you're stationed somewhere That's here in not, the States, that is you're... not the intent of why that ordinance went forward. Right. That's exactly right. That's not how it was proposed to us. Correct. Uh, but, like, if, if you're uh, in train, let's say you go to boot camp. Mm -hmm. um, and you're coming. You yeah, you're 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 still a main resident, right? Uh, Correct. And you could be, you know, you could be training all summer, doing something in mm -hmm. the swamps of Georgia. You're yeah. still a main resident. Correct. Um, so I, 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 we'll see. I, I suspect he gets to pick whatever state he wants. But, but it says permanently, and it says you know there are some key words here that we mm. Mm. we all know that words can get you. Yeah. Mm. Um, okay, okay uh, uh, moving on to abatements. All right. Item seven. Item seven. The first, um, does your, does your copy show two abatements? No. No. Okay. I'm not happy about that, but okay, first abatement. Abatement of 191.64 in 2020 property taxes 
Map and Lot 10, um, Map 10, Lot 5. As requested by Josh Moore, an assessor's agent, because the owner did not receive the reduction for boat access only after waterfront adjustments were made for 2020. Um, so this lot has nothing but boat access. You can't drive to it. When we redid the neighborhood of valuation, Josh missed putting the boat access only on there, which would reduce their taxes 191. Which lake is on? Manhattan. Yeah. So. That all makes sense. Um, do you, so you need a motion? I need a motion. Make a motion to grant the abatement of one ninety-one point six uh, and sixty-four cents. Um, do I have this as requested by? As requested by Josh Moore and for map and lot ten five. Any further discussion? No? We all vote? All three of us are in favor. And then you said there's another one? There is another request for an abatement, which the which Josh Moore, the assessor's agent, believes we should deny. And he... Yep, that's 191. Okay. Wait, so we're signing the 191, yes? Yeah, that's the one we just approved. You want me to read this? Mm. You can read it, yeah. Okay. Um, to whom it may concern, Peter Drummond owns property in Sangerville, Maine, located at 132 North Dexter Road, identified on map 10, lot 19-1. We removed Peter's homestead exemption due to him renting his house and feels he does not live there, feel he does not live there anymore. The renters of the property located at this address have registered their cars in town, and since Peter is renting the house and not living there, he does not qualify for the homestead. This is a one-family dwelling with no apartment, so at this time, I feel that Peter's abatement application should be de denied and should fill another application if he returns to the address. Okay, so saying... Um the town does not police these things. Um, actually, we put a form in our town report every year saying if th something has changed, please report this to the assessor so that we know to change things. When things come across the town clerk's and the deputy clerk's desk that lead us to believe something has changed, we notify the assessor. So, there are indeed other people living at this residence. They've registered to vote using the 132 address and they have registered at least one vehicle using mm. that. Um, I have not heard. We don't need to sign that, do we? No, well, it's only it, yeah. if we approve it. So right. if, if you want saying. to back the assessor's agent, you would sign this. If you don't sign it, it could still time out and go to the county commissioners. but. Your signature is saying that you agree with Josh State that you're backing. Sure. Yeah, and I should be clear. What I read was written by Josh Morin, the assessor's, assessor's agent. Right. So. so, so we do want to accept okay. Josh's opinion of not Correct. awarding the abatement and okay. sign that. I, I get it. I, I, so, do we need a motion to accept Josh's we, opinion? We do. So that you can sign it and well, I'll, I'll make that motion that we accept the opinion of Joshua Morin as I read it. Our tax assessor agent, right? Yep. Yep. Second. Any further discussion on this? We vote. We're all in favor of accepting Josh's instruction. So I will call him tomorrow and he will send a letter out. And then... I guess I should tell you that um, the letter says if your abatement request has been denied, you have 60 days from the denial to appeal this decision to the, the uh, Piscataquis County Commissioner's Office, and it gives the contact person and their phone number and the mailing address. Um, as written in Title 36 MRSA Section 844, Subsection 1, if your abatement request has been denied by the County Commission or you have not received written decision within 60 days of hearing, deeming it denied, which is Rule 80B. You have 30 days from denial to appeal to Superior Court. 
if you have any further questions regarding this matter, please do not hesitate. So that's that's the letter. So if he does appeal, and he does, or not him, just anybody in general, mm -hmm. if one of these gets appealed, they go to the county level. Oh, yeah. Yes. Are we gonna? You gonna get notified of that? Yes. That he is going there. Yes. And would would Josh go to that? Josh would go to that. I would go or, with okay. Josh, and if you were available, any and all of you could go to okay. that. Okay. I just well. didn't know how that. So you'll makes, notify us if that's gonna happen. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just didn't want to make sure that whenever that happens, yeah. that we all knew about. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Um, and so I guess I recommend backing your <laughs> oh, yeah. agent. Oh uh, yeah. What are we paying for? And we, uh, I definitely, we definitely sent that information to him when we had regist registrations coming across. Okay. There you go. Um, yep. Okay. Uh, are we through with that? Abatements. Yep. On to item eight, town manager's reports, website E911, 45 day notice for you. These are kind of all conflated together because um, I started working on one thing and then the rest of them pop up. I have a folder here for website um, info. Did you all know that last week or the week before the website went down, um, I spent both Thursday calling our website provider and couldn't get her to return my call. Um, the deputy clerk spent Friday doing that. She did finally return a call and say, oh, you're over your limit of data, so you can either sign on to this new plan or um, she could deal with her later because she didn't have time to deal with us right at that moment. She was showing up building to somebody. So Sarah got her to turn our emails and our website back on and um, we declined to up our subscription and removed um, a few things from our website so that Because we of all of our voice recording and... Well, I think recording... Also, that's stored on Google, uh, you know, yeah, YouTube, yeah, which is... Yeah, you're not, yeah, you're but I mean, what YouTube else is really up there? I mean, there is no other big... pictures and we don't have hey, any... We don't have any pictures. We apparently have a very very basic minimalist exactly yep. so i put sarah on it to look at um, other website providers i'd already talked to aaron weston who does the, the gis services for um dover the mapping stuff it's extremely expensive but i think uh, while we're looking at it What's extremely expensive? Well, Jack said that it cost him 15000 to um, get all the mapping stuff put okay. on the first time. But well, what about every year after that? So then it was, um, I think it was like 1500 annually. How much, how much money are we freaking around with between Josh dealing with maps and E911? And I mean, yeah, well, it's a lot of money to do that, but once you got it, you got it. Right. Also, the other thing is Dover is much larger, right. or has more. Well, it's two down. Yeah. I mean, and I, right. So I it would seem it would. We well, could yeah, it might be this, less. We right. could explore this with Aaron because I think the prices come down in terms of they have access to things people already have. Oh, like there's a hunting app you can put on your phone that does the same exact thing that that app's doing right, right now. Oh, so that you know people's land. Aha, yep. uh -huh, that's yep. interesting. So. It may not be out of the realm of possibility. Sure. It may not be that we want to go with this company, or it may not be that... Um, the one thing that I have a question about Dover's site, mm -hmm. and this is something between Trio and Josh, but if you go on their site, you can click right on, you look at their tax cards, you look at everything. Right. But it looks totally different than anything that I've seen as far as how what we're doing. So how does... My question is... Is let's just say we waived a one and we had that tomorrow. Yeah. How does what Josh does gonna interact with that system? Because he's gonna have to all this information is yeah. really in three places. Yeah. So and how does that system work with Trio? Because all I your think this C C A I would be in charge of getting all that to mesh. I don't know. 
I would and I, I so would just ask that part of that's part of the that fee um, annual fee because they're doing a lot more. Right. I mean, we pay two, right now we're paying two hundred or two hundred and fifty to our person who does absolutely nothing but avoid <laughs> pays. Avoid yeah, us. but I'm saying is though if you're gonna if you buy this new system, right, and that has all your tax stuff information in it, so. Is that going to save us time, make it easier in the office by having this? Is there a gain to it? I don't Do know. Do we don't need the same level of TRIO anymore because now you have this other version that's doing tax cards? TRIO is going to the web version, and I don't know if that in any way is going to benefit us. Um, I don't know, but it's just questions that I would have yeah. when it comes um, to... But an easy... I mean, if, we're, if, if our capacity right now at $250 a year is... Not no, enough. No. Pretty easy to boost it to five hundred, and that solves our problem for. A, I mean, for another year or so. Probably for a long time. Right. I mean, right. So. If you so, if you're happy with our provider, who I will have to say we're the office staff and I are not. Yeah. Well, we, <laughs> Terry had some interaction too, and that's a, she got the same. She did. You know, okay. So, um, but I think it's easy if we go if we double our capacity. You're not probably ever going to have to speak to her again. Perhaps. Because so what do we spend, right, again. What well, do we spend right now? Two hundred and fifty dollars a year. Except, yeah, a year, nothing. Except that we have to wait for her to turn. We wait for her to turn off the website, and we'll call her and she say, "Well, you haven't paid your bills." Like, "Well, you haven't sent this one." Yeah, I would just pay her in advance for yeah. a, a full year, yeah. and yeah. if you double your capacity, it's never going to get turned off again. Yeah. All right. Well, and that's the other thing is it's you're pretty hard to. It's pretty hard to justify spending fifteen thousand on a website when you're getting one for two fifty. Yeah. Mm. Well, yeah. We have that. And you know what? Our website, as minimalist as it is, is That's still true. more significant it's than way better what than other towns have. have. Yeah. I've looked at a lot of the places. And yeah. Well, Ours has a lot more to offer. And Sarah's been looking at it, and I think she might be able to do it herself. We might be able to. We're open. Excellent. We yeah, to we're yourself. open. <laughs> Free I, want, is I want to tell you that <laughs> that's, that's we right. also looked at um, further north consulting. Mm -hmm. They gave us a price um, that is less than fifteen thousand, but a lot more than two fifty. <laughs> but a lot more than two fifty, and they could get us a grant for sixty percent of it um, because of putting. COVID um, information and resources on our on our site. So let's see if I got that. See, so now you got my wheels turning. It was fifteen for the other thing. <laughs> That's for Dover, which is actually two towns, so we'd be closer yeah. to ten. Okay, so now with sixty percent, we could get into that nice because we could put COVID on that one as well. We get a grant. And, we could get a grant there. So you now we're down to four grand to have. Well, a, proposed total. They all really want hosting to environment and maintenance more. versus five hundred bucks a year. Yeah, and, <laughs> and domain for a year would be six hundred six thousand five hundred. Sixty percent of that is three thousand nine hundred. So you're down to twenty six hundred. Whoa! With an annual um, fee of five fifty. But for five fifty, you get um, a fully responsive website, a search engine optimization, um, transfer of information from former site, multiple pages, all current. But they'll do they'll do some updating for you in. Um, do some on site training. I'm curious what Sarah can come up with. Yeah. Um, so then we look. There you go. Greenville. I believe you're out there spending 15 grand. Right. Well, <laughs> oh, Greenville I ain't getting up on that. Liz Costa, he's, he offers plans for a thousand bucks and up. Um, and then Dexter pays a monthly fee for their website. It looks to be. Like two hundred a month, not a year. Jeez. So there's all sorts of options out there. I guess what I wanted to tell you is that I go from saying, "Oh, maybe we could do this ourselves." To all right, the first thing I would do is is set it up so you don't have any more disruptions, right. yeah. and then work on yeah. you know Whatever we'll work you on our dream site. Right. Okay. So I guess 
I'll talk to Brenda if she'll ever answer my calls and we'll sign <laughs> That's up. That's annoying. We'll sign up for the extra and then And work. is it terminal term can you terminate it at <laughs> any time? <laughs> well I she'll need to send me a contract. Okay. Gotcha. And you know, if if Sarah comes up with an option, maybe you don't want to commit to anything right away. Yeah, that's I right. Mean, we don't. Well, we just don't want to shut down. But. Well, yes, our, our our coverage ran out at the end of August, so we got to do something. Okay. Yeah. I held off paying her until I talked to you because the mm -hmm. consensus is. It's 250 bucks. I just pay it. Yeah, yeah. and you know what? Two months from now, we go to. If we have some we duplicate go. plan to save us money in the future. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I've covered the website. Um, 45 day notices is the easiest to cover. They all went out. We had one person already pay their 2018 taxes. We're down to around 20, I think it's 27 at last count. Um, that's a little lower than, than last year. Um, E911, as you know, it's... Um, oh. Yeah, I had that on there because they connects to the website if you if we could get that um, listed. But we we have many issues. We're way way way. We started and then just never finished it. Um, so I went down to the Anderson Road yesterday, mm -hmm. day before yesterday, and um, it was. I took some pictures so that I could figure out using the state's E91 website, Google Earth, and kind of meshing everything so I could get the numbers in the right spots. And um, so that was an interesting. That's why I took pictures of the Better Camp and oh. all of those. Um, and that's going to take a long time to update but and then the FOAA I took the course offered by MMA um, there were, weren't a huge number of things that were surprising but it was an it was an interesting um, review I did ask the question in terms of disciplinary action whether or not it was um, accessible by FOA it is um, but Flewelling made sure that we knew that it's accessible only after all appeals are um, used. used up. There were a couple of other things that were interesting. Um, the a town manager, I think it was from Unity, Unity or Union, <laughs> he um, had a few years back had a really rough time with a group who was. FOA everything and anything and seen that movie and he had some, he had some insights in into that um, one of the things he was really recommending is that the three of you have town email I didn't know yeah, we, we tried to get it set up that. yeah we we've, we've done this a bunch of times yeah okay we've all had them never been able to sign into any of that's them that's right yeah. could never get okay. into them. Can't say that with what we've got, we're likely to, but I can try to get that as part of. Yeah, it's supposed to be right through the. The last one wasn't it with the new service we got. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, all I, I, I totally support the idea, but I can tell you that I haven't received an email uh, regarding town business from a citizen in yeah. well over a year and a half. Yeah. Yeah. And, and prior to that, maybe one or two. Well, and the only yeah. good thing that I could see that would come of it is. And I would lay, mark them. However, well, I wouldn't. I think they should be selectmen A, B, C, or something like that. And then it doesn't matter whether it's me or you, or us three. As we leave, the whoever comes in oh, yeah, gets gets that, that email, yeah. and then that way there you you keep all that history and mm -hmm. things that was discussed in the past. Everybody mm -hmm. would have it, which mm -hmm. would be good. Mm, that's a good point. But. But the other thing is, right now, are our emails posted on the, our website? So that's why we're not getting. I don't think my. No. I don't think our email address. Our phone numbers are up there. Yeah, our phone numbers, but, but not our email. Right. So that's why we're not getting any correspondence. Correct. Right. So I don't know that you that you'd want to, but it was. It's just a case of if you do anything by email, like I can email you and say, 
here's all this stuff that I'm going to talk to you right, about. Right, we review it at the meeting. Yeah, and we re review it at the meeting. Or can you meet at this time? Mm -hmm. Those are all things that you should be discussing on email. Otherwise, things like, what do you think about this, are not yeah. questions mm -hmm. that you should be Correct. dealing we, with yeah, on email. That's yeah. so you don't. We all know. That. We all know. But, yeah, and same thing responding that, to a resident. But, like, we yeah. don't respond. Like I went back when I've had a few emails, I never replied. Right. So got them, bring it here. We talked about it in an open meeting, but right. no. In fact, I've even had people get upset with me because I said, "Call me. I'll be happy to talk to you about it." But I'm not getting into this in an email. Mm -hmm. right. And well, they wouldn't call me. <laughs> so <yeah>. and actually, <laughs> yeah. the thing with that's putting it in email is that you could, but then if somebody FOAs it. You could spend a lot of time. Well, that's why oh, that's I just it. don't get into it. Looking through that's all. Well, well, <laughs> exactly. When we get those, that's yeah. what we do. Is we actually bring them here and, and we, we read we them. Read them yeah, exactly. right that's, on it's here. So, right. That's right. That's yeah. exactly right. That's, you know, and just, maybe that's why we don't get many anymore. Well, that's that right. could be the reason. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we don't get them in high them. We share whatever we get. So. Yep. Verbatim. Mm -hmm. uh, now the other possibility is you have one selectman's email that every one of us have access to. Mm -hmm. So if if yeah. the selectmen get an email, we all can see it. Mm -hmm. And if one of us responds to it, we all can see it. That and it would be part of the town record. That would be that would, that that would function that for me. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so that work. That's selectmen. Select yeah. Yep. Select board email. <laughs> yeah. And then all correspondence, you'd have a permanent record of it. That's a that's a good idea. Right, because even if you send an email and it comes in and Mike read, read it, we all sign into it, but right. Mike reads it first, it doesn't, it's still there. If we I respond it. to it, you all of you are going to see can, it. Correct. And can see what you responded, yep. right. yeah. And pipe in. Right, right. Yeah. Yep. You know, what I expect to see is I will be taking this to the next select board <laughs> meeting. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I will right. be discussing it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that would actually work perfect. Okay. Just we'll select it. Sangerville.com. And the other thing is, I don't know if you, when you were, um, did you do your FOA once you were re-elected? You're supposed to redo it? I've never you're redone it. You're supposed to redo it. Well, you're going to get me within, the form so soon. Oh, you no, know, I didn't. So all you have to do is go on Maine.gov's website, go to the frequently asked questions for the FOA. Review them, and then I'll get you a form to sign saying that you okay. understand. Got it. Will do. So we should do that. Okay. Uh, anything else? Continuing ed is what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just a refresher every... I don't believe I signed the second one. Okay. You couldn't have signed the first so, one. All right. I signed the first one. Okay. <laughs> took me a while. <laughs> so I will get those out, and you guys can... You guys have homework. <laughs> okay. We'll do that. And I guess the next thing is I didn't add the road commissioner's report because I didn't feel I had much to add, and I mentioned it earlier, but I have somebody to do the remaining ditching for East Sangerville. And so... That will be starting soon, then. That will be starting hopefully next week. Um, yeah. Anything else on that before I interrupt you? Yes. One... One thing is, there were two culverts, I think, that need to be replaced. One of them, I think, was in question, and I don't have any of the information. Was in question as far as whether it needs to be replaced or not? In question in, as in whether the landowner is going to, wanted to, the culvert not to be, she blocked it, and not to be um yeah, to, no, that's not a, supposed to, actually, there's been conversations. Uh-huh, that's was, what I was wanting She to was going to, she was informed, she didn't realize she wasn't allowed to block it. Uh-huh. She was informed that she's not allowed to block it. Okay. And so that's where, I didn't know where you guys left it. And yeah, no, this has been, Yeah, she's not supposed been. to, yeah, that's not supposed to be blocked. Okay. It needs to be replaced, it needs to be replaced. Okay. And I thought, I, when I first came out, I thought I saw a folder that said there was, Another resident was giving you an easement to put in a culvert. Well, there was all kinds of talk about whether we needed this easement mm -hmm. because of all okay. this massive water. Okay, so the so we did the ditching down through there, and it solved the problem because that culvert was unblocked. Mm -hmm. okay. So some of the water went that way, and the rest of the water went down, and we was all good, and it wasn't an issue. Okay, 
Okay, so I just wanted to make so sure. So now, if the culvert is blocked, blocked and we have I don't know. That, I don't know that it's blocked, but I okay. didn't know where we stood on the issue, and I'm was... about to send a contractor out there, and I didn't want him to catch. There's no blocking of culvert. Same right. contractor that did it last time. He already knows all about it. No. Okay. Well, I'm sending here Herrick excavation. Okay. Up. No, I was. No, I was just before we. I mean, we already went through this once, so. No. And I guess the only other thing is I'm sending going to have um, Bailey construction, excavation, whatever, replace a culvert on the golf road. Okay. It's been, those are, the, those are the two biggies, and I told you that Warren is going to do the yep. yard, because otherwise we may have a moat and not be able to get in. <laughs> in soon. It's overdone. I like sitting here and listening to you got one contractor doing this right. and one contractor yeah, yeah, doing that. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Another contractor. That. That's great. Yeah. That is where we're at for road commissioner. And your pile of sand is coming in. <laughs> well, I talked to it exists. Mr. Lawson. It's piled up it in his <laughs> we're told it exists. He was um, working on getting the salt, the sand, and the be able to put up the sand all together at the same time. He said it would happen sometime this month. Okay. Okay. He, uh, and he, as he had trucks rolling, I'm assuming that we probably, I'll just check in with him in, next week and see. But I, I think he, I think we will have sand this month and it won't be an, an issue. I'm done rambling. Um, we talked about the resident on McFeeters that filled our ditch with riprap. Mm -hmm. I didn't follow have, up on that. You have seen it, Jordan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have. Have you seen it? Yeah. yeah. I don't. I don't think you can do that. No. No. <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know where that is, right? I do. Okay. I just let it drop off my to-do list. And then the only other question is, it, I, I know that we talked about doing the, you know, Rick, we're doing the sides of the road, mm -hmm. and we're going to go ahead with that, but are we, are we going to do anything about what he suggested as far as scraping, raking, whatever? Flipping. Flipping and yeah. raking. I think we ought to see what he's, I, I tell you what I'm really worried about. Yeah. Is that he's going to come down through and do this. Yeah. I'm not worried about running an excavator down and cleaning it up so you can mow. What I am worried about is all the trees that he's going to leave. That's, I just, whoop, I want to see the, we have plenty of time to flip it. Okay. Yeah, that's the right. Yeah. I, I think what's going to cost yeah, you more money than the, yeah. I think you're going to have to hire somebody to go in there and cut a lot of trees out that he's not going to be able to do that are in this oh, path. That kind of tree, okay. That's what I'm saying. You mean big oh. trees? Big trees. And if you're not going to cut the big a ones, couple in uh, Charleston, yeah. you'd see a tree sitting oh, yeah, out, yeah. and he, he went did, around because it was just obviously too big. Too big. It was too big. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it, it but we could have a lot of those. That's what I'm saying. That's what we really need to see because okay. it's not going to do any okay. good to stump that out if you have trees everywhere. We right, still right. can't mow it anyway. Right. Okay. Okay. And maybe a we may be under a different thing with him. Okay. You get 30 miles of road. We're going to do this every five years. You're going to whack it hard, get it done, and then. Instead of the cheaper money for mowing, we're going to have you keep doing six miles a year at a cheaper and in between price because you but just can't get them But here's the question should those big trees be gone? Should we then, 100%. after. Yeah, so they need to be cut and then stomped out. That needs to be but stomped out. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I think that number yeah. is going to be so huge that you might not do it. Right? No. Because, I mean, in theory, if you go down to Silver's Mills and you look at the power line, yeah. for what he's talking about, the power line's not white. You gotta cut the other side of that. And if you drive down that road, there's there's nothing. I mean, he can get the shrubs on the bottom, and he might be able to get a few limbs, but he's not taking that that whole road. You're not taking them trees out. That's that's what I just, when I said it just gives me pause. I don't see how he's gonna do this pushback. Has thing. he looked at that road? We went down so much mills because I didn't even know if he could do the roadside mowing. I was mm -hmm. I was really afraid that. Mm. I hadn't been able to get anybody to remove all the stuff, and then he just wasn't going to be able to do it. He said, oh, I can do this. And I'm like, okay. And he did most of it, but there were some things, uh, are some things still there that are in the way. And he said, but yeah, he said, oh, I could brush cut this. And then he wanted to know how far he had. 
when I told him it was a four broad road, he was all very, very <laughs> happy because he's like, well, that's 33 feet. Mm -hmm. But there's a huge difference, too, between limbing hardwoods and like the alder growth that I'm dealing with on the French's Mills Road Correct. that is literally seven and a half to eight feet high after right. two summers. Yeah. If you take all the limbs off a beach, it's long, long time before it encroaches again. 100%. So, right. It's not I, growing a new limb no, there. No, it'll it get all fuzzy, yeah, yeah. but it's not intruding no. for several right, years. Right. Yeah. Uh, so and my other side of it is, is that even if you can't get everything for as bad a shape as we in, oh, what he's charging us, you can't hire two or right. three guys to go out and cut it and chip I, it. I agree. So, yeah, yeah. so it's worth having him come and do whatever. We got to do it. That's what I mean. Yeah. I mean yeah. We have to do it. And if you're going to we'll do look and see what one or the other, he's still cheaper. Right. So why not let him do all he can, and then we'll have to then we'll evaluate. Figure out what you want to do okay. next. Good. That sounds like a plan. So I like it. So I will I will get you the mileage to the gray resident so you can add the two together. Maybe he'll give us yeah. a little discount on that final whatever. But I yeah we we're making the best of a less than perfect situation. Mm -hmm. there, so. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to ask about that and Flanders. Yeah, sure. uh, Flanders mm -hmm. definitely needs to be done okay. yes. badly. <laughs> and we, let's try to research herbicide. See what we are allowed to do. Who does it? What does it cost? I mean, maybe it's totally impossible. I don't know. But it's... If we I could do, do the French's Mills Road before the frost hits, it would be great. I do know that the state has a list of licensed people who do herbicides. And that's, that's, as, that's, and, that, and that's as far as I got. Yep. I think it's, and even if we're very selective about where we do it, yep. I still think it could save us a ton of money. All right. Anything else? I have one... One thing, when we do a 45 day notice, as I was reviewing the lean manual, and I came across the um, special instances where you can lean, put on leans for special things. This one's called the Dangerous Building Lean. It's under at, um, Title 17 MRSA Section 2851. The municipal officers may order the abatement of a structure that meets the statutory criteria of a dangerous building after following specific notice and hearing procedures in the law. If the building is not repaired or removed, the municipal officers may cause the nuisance to be abated and bill the landowner. If the municipal abatement expenses are not paid by the landowner within 30 days of demand, these costs may be recovered by assessing a special tax against the land. Um, the tax must include the must be included in the next annual warrant to the collector and may be collected in the same manner as property taxes, including by automatic lien foreclosure. The tax may include the municipality's expenses of abatement, including the cost of title searches, service of process, costs of securing and removing a structure, and other costs reasonably related to removal of the structure. The special taxes then collect collected in the same manner as other real estate property taxes using the same procedures and forms for the tax lien mortgage process. The special tax must be separated, separately assessed, um, separately listed in the commitment, and separately liened and not included with real estate taxes for the parcel in question. Dangerous buildings information packets for under MMA for additional information. So I've started looking at all of that. Um, but we keep coming across, the code enforcement officer wanted to clean up places and then tax them. I don't believe you can, but apparently with dangerous buildings, you can follow that procedure. Yeah, I, I spoke to Flewellen about mm -hmm. trying to attach a, a code enforcement violation fine to yeah. the property tax, and he said no. Yeah. Yep, that's, that's the same answer I get. He admitted it would be convenient. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Would. So I just wanted, I have all this information. Um, there are several buildings in town that you may at some point want to look, <laughs> look at or not look at. Um, I thought it was interesting information. Okay. Uh, anything further? No? Executive session? None? Motion to adjourn. Second.
It's 10 after 7.